Alright guys, I just wanted to show you my uh, 55 gallon fish only tank, it's a Fowler. Um, although that's a fast and loose definition at this point because we've got an urchin, a chocolate chip star in there, and then also a peacock mantis shrimp in there somewhere. Um, so it's not fish only, but it's you know not a reef tank either, so I think it still fits under the Fowler umbrella. But if you haven't noticed so far, it's pretty much a damsel tank, right? You've got like a yellowtail, a similar damsel, a, I'm sorry, a yellowtail damsel, a similar damsel, kind of right there in the middle of the frame. That guy with a yellow bottom is an azure damsel. They all three look very similar, but they are a different species, right? Um, you got a, a uh, three-stripe damsel there. He's probably the most aggressive damsel in the tank. And then we've got a pair of Karki clownfish. That would be the female right there. And then up here, somewhere, oh, he's coming down here, you've got the male. Um, so this is a fairly aggressive tank, right? But that's why I wanted this tank set up like this, was, you know, these are fish that, well, you can, oh, and I forgot, we also have a lemon damsel up in the corner. He's kind of the bottom of the totem pole, so he sticks to that corner. But anyway, back to my thought. Um, the reason I wanted this tank set up like this was because it's so hard to keep some of these fish in a normal uh, community tank, right? Um, you know, you put pretty much any one of these fish, with the exception of maybe the similar damsel, into your average fowler or reef tank, and they're probably going to pick on everything so much that you're going to hate it. No matter how pretty or how personable they are, they just, they cause problems. So, I kind of wanted a tank where I didn't have to worry about that, and to me, this has the same appeal that I think African cichlids have to a lot of people, where it's really kind of a Thunderdome 24-7, right? I mean, that doesn't maybe doesn't sound great, but I mean, this is not a calm, peaceful tank, right? I mean, if we watch this guy, he usually sticks to his corner because something like that happens, right? So he stays over there. Now, if you look at him, it's kind of hard to see him. His fins are fine. He's not actually getting hurt or injured or anything like that. None of these fish have torn fins, although the yellowtail damsel does have a chunk out of his dorsal fin that regrow that regrew weird. Um, but it's been like that since I got him. So more than likely in another tank at some point he's gotten injured. I'll see if I can get some view of that. But yeah, it's an aggressive tank. They're always active, they're always doing something. If there's food, they're not going to fight, but they'll definitely kind of chase each other around a little bit. And they're so brightly colored, right? I mean, this isn't the prettiest tank in the world. I didn't do a great job when I escaped it. Um, it's got some algae on the back that I, need, that I need, to, need to take care of. But it's a very drawing tank, right? Um, and in my opinion, this is a healthy fish-only tank. Um, if you look at the rock, if I can zoom in, see all that, you know, all of these things living on the rock here. Um, this rock has been set up for about two years, so it's about two years old, which isn't that old for saltwater tanks, you know. They set up, they run for several years at a time, but it's well-established rock. I don't typically have many algae problems, partially due to the tank being established, but also because I'm using, like, a cheap Greenland light. Um, that, you know, it's the dimmest tank in my uh, house, so it's a pretty dim tank, but it does really well for me. You can see that I don't, it's not a deep sand bed, but it's kind of deeper, right? So if we look at the uh, sand bed here, I've got tons of just crud down there, and I don't siphon it. I do stir up small sections at a time, so I'll stir up, you know, I guess six by six section and do that. Um, and then we also have like a fighting conch over here in the corner. Uh, that one helps you know, keep it stirred up and the peacock mantis will actually stir up the, sub the top layers of the sub substrate too as she digs. And uh, that's kind of the odd one out in this thing is the peacock mantis. I've had her for 10 or 11 months now, quite a while. And um, she is about four and a half to five inches. Um, hopefully you're seeing some b-roll on your screen on your screen, but um, she's huge, right? Um, she does not go after the other fish. She will steal food from them, but I've never seen her actually go after another fish. And she actually lived in a 20 gallon long. Actually, it was this 20 gallon long that's currently my quarantine tank. 
she lived in there for most of the time that I've had her. And you know, recently she's just gotten a little bit bigger. Um, water parameters are starting to get harder and harder to keep under control. <clears throat> so I said, you know what? Let's put her in here. Um, I had the three strike damsel with her for the entire time that I had her. And I never saw any, you know, sign that she was attacking them. So into this tank she went and I've had no problems. But having her in here is really cool because you'll see, just as an example, those shells right there or this macroalgae up here. Um, she will change the tank according to what she wants. So, you know, I'll wake up and she will have moved shells to door to make doors or cover up certain holes in her um, cave there. And she's probably right up inside here, if I had to guess. She might not want to be bothered. Yeah, I don't see her right now. She might be. She's got like a secondary den over here. She's not there either. Well, I'll get some B-roll over. But, yeah, she's a really cool one. She's definitely, you know, kind of unique in that, you know, there's not much like a mantis shrimp, in my opinion. Um, this one isn't super aggressive. She's really docile, really laid back. I mean, she'll go after, you know, food if I put it in there, but she doesn't ever, you know, act like she's trying to punch me or punch other fish. So, that's a good thing. Um, in terms of equipment, uh, we did, went pretty basic. We've got two... There's a starfish too, by the way. But we've got two Aquion uh, powerheads in here. We've got one Aquion 1250, which is this guy. And then the other one is an Aquion 950. We also have a Fuval 300 watt heater and a very salty Marine Land. Um, it's supposed to be a 48 inch light, but it's more like 40 inches. Um, this is the same one that comes in there, 55 gallon kits. Um, I got it off a friend for like 20 bucks, so went very basic. There's you know no chemical filtration, no mechanical filtration on this tank. It's just flow, live rock, a sand bed, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, this is just you know a simple tank. I enjoy it. I've also got this auto feeder up here, which keeps that feeds twice a day, just some flake food, and then I'll feed it a third time. Once a, or I'll feed a third time, just like frozen foods, that kind of thing, um, just to keep the fish from getting too aggressive. Because the more the hungrier they get, the more they tend to, you know, attack each other and stuff like that. Um, the mantis shrimp gets fed every other day, so I'll throw either like a clam on the half shell, which is why you're seeing these, you know, clam shells in there, or you know, a piece of shrimp or uh, like a fiddler crab or something like that uh, for her to you know, chow down on and she does really well on that schedule. Uh, you can feed them daily but they tend to, once they've made their burrow like that, they tend to pack rat food. So if she eats, if she grabs a clam on the half shell, she only eats half of it, they'll store that food in their burrow. And long term, all that rotting food in there, you can't see it so you can't take it out that can cause some pretty bad ammonia issues. Um, so, you know, it's not ideal, but it is what it is. You know, you just gotta be careful how much you feed. Um, this tank gets about 10, 15 gallons of water changed out every week. So it's a not a terribly high maintenance tank, but it, it's not, you know, set up and forget it either. I do wanna get a an in-tank uh, protein skimmer soon, but the ones I'm looking at are, you know, too, 250 bucks, something like that. So they're not cheap, but you know, you're not going to get a good one for cheap in my experience. Um, one cool thing to note: this female clown has been digging out this back right area. I'll see her, you know, throw sand around back here. I don't know why that is. Like I don't, I think that clownfish will typically lay their eggs on like rock. Um, so I don't think that that's breeding behavior. But she just started doing it within the last month or so, so that'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, the Clarky Clowns are my favorite species of clownfish. Um, they get about five, six inches for females, so they get large. These guys are only about three inches right now. But they're kind of mean, right? That's why I put them in this tank. They're beautiful, especially like these are captive bred, and their breath are a little bit longer fins. See her? She's got that real long tail fin. 
but she is the boss of this tank. She will put other fish in their place, and typically, she's the one that, you know, I have to kind of watch, and if there is any aggression issues, she will be the one I have to kind of shoo away, but it doesn't happen very often. Um, about the only, uh, only other thing I really want to mention on this tank um, right now is that this tank has been set up like this since before I started quarantining my fish. So I didn't always quarantine. Um, I used to kind of roll the dice and I got bit in the butt, so to speak, for uh, quite a few times and ended up losing a lot of money in fish. Uh, this tank actually ran fallow for like 76 days because of ick and then I wasn't smart enough to quarantine, right? So then we had to, uh, we, it, it still got ick in there, but clownfish and damsels are typically very hardy when it comes to external parasites because they've got a super thick slime coat. So they might be carrying a few ick parasites in their gills. Um, if they get like an open cut, they might carry some there. But in general, they're not going to be big hosts for it, so they're still carrying ick, but it's not spreading to what we will usually see as the white spots, which is the little uh, callus that forms around the parasite. So even though you can't tell it, this tank does have some ick in it. I am pretty much sure of it. So at some point, this tank is going to have to be torn down, um, run fallow for 76 days, and then I'm going to treat all these fish with copper in a hospital tank. And that's not because I'm worried about these fish. These fish will probably live their entire lives with it, and it will probably never be an issue, unless something happened like a power outage or something like that. Um, but it's, you know, what if one day I forget, and I dip a net in here, and then dip it into another tank, and I manage to spread it that way. Or if I change out some water, and I'm not thinking, I don't sterilize the bucket, and then I use that same bucket to, let's say, mix up new water. Or, or it, there's some water left over in my um, in my siphon, and you know some back siphons into an aquarium, right? You get all these things that are just like, man, it would be so much easier if I would just. You see that guy's actually flashing a little bit right there, right? I've never seen spots on these fish, but every now and then I'll see something like that. That just makes me think, oh man, you know, that's still, it's, it's a reminder that it's still there, right? But, you know, for now, I just keep things well fed. I manage it. All these fish seem healthy to me, and um, they've all done well. But, yeah, I'll have to tear down this tank, or at least catch the fish out, and treat them all with copper at some point. I'm not looking forward to that, but it'll have to happen one day. For now, we keep on managing it, and I just kind of wanted to chime in with that. And I haven't shown you, you you guys this tank in quite a long time, so hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, like and subscribe if you liked it, and you know, let me know what I can do better. Thanks.